Today we're talking about three things you need to know as a mobile detailer. But first, let's go back to the job site where we were cleaning a Toyota Corolla, just an interior cleaning for $280. Now the main focus of this interior were the seats just because those had the most stains. When it comes to cleaning the plastic panels, that's pretty straightforward just because you only need to use a few tools and products and cleaning plastics is pretty straightforward. But let's get to the first thing you need to know and is that two things are gonna highly factor into how you're able to run your schedule as a mobile detailer. And that's going to be one, the weather. So like right now here in Houston, it's very cold. We're gonna hit freezing temperatures uh, tomorrow and if it gets that cold or colder in your area, then it's gonna affect the way you're able to work. And for us, I know there's people out there that say, hey, no, I'm gonna go out there and work every single day regardless of weather. Like at some certain point, it's just not healthy for you to be out there, right? Whether it's too hot or whether it's too cold, at some point, you know, maybe you just should reschedule that customer. Maybe you shouldn't go out there just because like, for what? Just, just do it another day. And I get it, if you need the money, whatever, whatever. Trust me, I've done those days too. But at this point, especially with a team now, I'm not gonna put them through some like severe weather just because we wanna get that customer in. Like if it's too cold or too hot, we're gonna adjust the schedule. The second thing is the traffic, meaning if there's construction going on, if there's exits closed, if there's highways closed, if there's you know an accident, that can definitely maybe not completely throw off your schedule, but it might make you late to the first appointment, which might make you late to the second one, which might make you late to the third one. And we've had times where like we either can't get to all the services or we have to come back another day just because like traffic was so bad and we kept on getting held back that by the time we got to the third detail, we were so off schedule that we couldn't do what we wanted to do. So weather and traffic are gonna play a factor into how you run your schedule. And let me know in the comment section down below, how much would you charge to do a deep interior cleaning on a Toyota Corolla like we have here? So this is what I mean by having a team makes a big difference. This day was pretty busy. We had two vehicles to service at that location. We had another vehicle at one o'clock at the shop and then another vehicle at three o'clock at the shop. And even as busy as it was and as much thing that were going on, we still have a good time. We still laugh, we still say jokes, we still are able to have a conversation the, the entire time. We're still working pretty hard and, and making sure we're keep, keeping up with the schedule. But at the same time, it just makes a big difference to be able to talk to someone. I mean, I remember so many times where like I would work from, you know, whatever, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And the whole time, like I didn't talk to anyone until like 7 p.m. So making a team makes a big difference. And that leads me to my second point, where at some point, if it makes sense for you, think about hiring a helper. Now, I don't mean a full-time employee that they're gonna get 40 hours a week with benefits and all that, no. Just saying, if your workload is getting too big, if you can't handle all the customers, if you're always out there till eight, 9 p.m., if you, know, you never catch a break, if you have to work six days out of the week, it makes a lot of sense to get some type of helper. And by helper, I mean someone that can work 10, 15, 20 hours a week. They're not a specialist. They don't know paint correction. They don't know how to code. They don't know how to wet sand, but they're able to clean the wheels and tires, help you prep the van, help you like move things around, bring you tools when you need them. Like, I don't mean like you need to go and get someone that like knows detailing. You just need someone to do the basic task of detailing because the reality is most things that you do in detailing isn't that difficult. You can teach just about anyone how to clean wheels, tires, fenders, how to dress tires, how to wash a vehicle, how to clay a vehicle, how to do an iron decon, how to tape a vehicle. Like most of those things, just about anyone can do. So if you get to that point where you're saying, well, I'm too busy or I don't have enough time to go do X, Y, Z, maybe it makes sense in your specific situation to hire someone to offload some of that work so you're able to get more time back to go do other things, right? Like you can work 60 hours a week detailing cars or you can work 40 hours a week detailing cars and then spend an extra 20 hours a week 
actually working on your business, actually working on marketing, working on business development, working on the finances. So don't get so stuck in just thinking about detailing that you have to detail. Over time, depending on your goals and what you want to accomplish, having a team will have a dramatic difference on what you're able to do. And by the way, if you want to start your detailing business, you can download my free ultimate guide to start your detailing business. There's over 10,000 words of content in that guide. It took me a lot of work and a lot of effort. You can click the description box down below to download it. And number three is this is more strategic, more high level thinking of how you operate your business, but you should be the easiest to do task the customer scratches off their list for the day, right? Think about your business in that sense. You want that customer to like, of all the things they have going on, picking up kids, going to work, going to a doctor's appointment, paying the bills, doing whatever, whatever, going to wherever, wherever right? You want them to look at their, to look at their to-do list for the day and say, okay, boom, got my car detailed. No ups, no downs, no nothing. No high emotion, no low emotion. Where are they? Oh, they're taking too long. No, none of that. You always want to keep them in the loop. They should always know the next steps. You should always be professional. You should always be like uh, making sure that the customer stays within the loop of what you have going on. So that means, hey, look, if you said you're going to be there at 9 a.m., be there at 9, 9 a.m. If you're going to get stuck, uh, you're going to fall behind because of traffic or weather or whatever, you don't wait till 9 a.m. to tell the customer. You call the customer or text the customer as soon as you know at eight, you know, 37, say, hey, customer, stuck in traffic. We might be there like at 9.15. You don't wait until they get frustrated to say, hey, where are they at, right? If you're gonna take, uh, if you said you're gonna be done by 12 p.m., but you're actually gonna be done by 1 p.m., you let the customer know, hey, customer, we're actually gonna take a bit longer than expected. The car was whatever, whatever, and you let them know. So always make sure that you're the easiest to do task on their to-do list. That's the way I look at it, right? So whatever we do, whether that's, you know, setting the appointment, the, the customer confirmation, emails or text messages, um, if they drop off the vehicle, if we're going mobile, like what do we have to do as a business to make sure we have the most seamless, hassle-free, non-stressful uh, uh, um, experience with our services? And I'm telling you, not a lot of businesses look at it that way. Like uh, most businesses are just like, yeah, yeah, hey, we got a customer, let's go do the job. Like think about it the way that you would want to interact with another business. Like how would you want to interact with a business? What's your favorite business you like to go to? And why is it your favorite business? Is, is it the staff? Is it the process? Is it their ambiance? Like what is it? Like replicate that of what you like, of where you like to go into your own business. I'm telling you, it'll make a dramatic difference in how you operate and how you treat your customers. Overall, this interior came out much, much better. It was actually in pretty rough condition. We didn't get that many before just because I got there after they started. So they already kind of started the cleaning process. But anyways, I'll end it right here. Let me know in the comment section down below if you want to add anything to this top three list. You can check the description box down below for the ultimate guide to start your detailing business. And I'll see you on the next one.